gold just passed $2,000 an ounce, setting the stage for a historic new bull run. Multiple billionaire investors are loading up on gold, including hedge fund founder Ray Dalio and real estate mogul Sam Zell, meaning now is the time to own gold. One precious metals expert is stepping forward with a big prediction. He believes we could see gold reach as high as $3,000 by the end of the year, possibly higher. So find out why and get instant access to his number one gold investment for 2022. It's not bullion, an ETF, or a mining stock. In the past, folks using the same gold strategy could have been able to make nearly 50 times their initial investment. Considering how quickly the price of gold has been moving, you don't want to waste any time missing out on the gains he believes are in store for this investment. So to get a copy of his new free report with all the details, simply go to 2022goldmania.com. Again, that's 2022goldmania.com for a free copy of his new report. Hi, this is Daniela Camboni and welcome back to Stansberry Research and part two of our discussion with Mark Yaxley, Managing Director over at Strategic Wealth Preservation, SWP. They are a bullion dealer and storage provider based in the Cayman Islands. And Mark uh, joins us from inside the vault in Cayman. Mark, uh, thanks for coming back and joining Always us. Always a pleasure, Daniela. So uh, as I promised, part two, we are talking counterfeits. Uh, for as long as coins have been around, well, the fakes have existed. And uh, one of the common questions we get is, well, how do you know if what you're buying is real or not? How can we protect ourselves? So Mark has agreed to graciously walk us through a few steps of how uh, one can see um, the, the real stuff from the fake stuff. Is that right? That's right, Danielle. I mean, unfortunately, counterfeiting is a reality that, you know, all industries face. Uh, the mints and refineries in our industry in particular have gone to great lengths, you know, starting somewhere around 2014, 15, we started to see a lot of increases in the technology in their products to try to, to, to counter counterfeiting. Um, but obviously, there are still testing um, methods that people can use that we use here at the vault and people can use at home to protect themselves as well. All right. So you're going to walk us through some uh, some steps. Now, what you have there, is that something that I can have at home? Yes, everything on this desk is available for purchase, uh, you know, online. I can uh, certainly provide the names of the equipment as I go through it and also provide you the links uh, you can you can give to your viewers. Is it really expensive equipment? Just uh, Not really. I think in total, you're probably looking at about $1,000 of equipment okay. on this table right now. So for some people, that might be a lot. But even if you owned like two out of four of these pieces of equipment that already Put you in a better position than someone who had none and i guess before we start it goes without saying that you know if you are buying from a reputable dealer um you wouldn't encounter these these issues that's right daniel that is literally the the pre-step to testing is avoid 99 percent of all potential problems buy from a reputable dealer they are sourcing either directly from refineries or from distributors of refineries and mints so you know you cut out a lot of the nonsense by just doing that all right, so I, I'll get out of your way. Please walk us through the process of, you know, what would Mark actually do? How does he test? <laughs> right, so what the methods that we use here at the vault, first of all, are non-destructive. And what we mean by non-destructive is that we are not melting or drilling any of the products that belong to our clients that we store. Obviously, we don't wanna affect the value of their products. So we use non-destructive testing methods because the, the only 100% sure way to know that something is real is if you melt it. And unfortunately, that is not an option right. uh, for, for retail investors. They don't want to be melting their gold and silver over and over again. So we use a four-step process inside the vaults. Each one of these steps independently on its own is not perfect. But when you put them all together in sequence, it actually will reduce uh, the, you know, or, or give us uh, information about the uh, correctness of the product or not. Is there something to be sus suspicious about and do we have to investigate that further? So the first one, it sounds a little bit silly, but you know, it is actually just pure common sense is you want to do a visual inspection of the stuff you receive. So if you order it online and you, know, you want to take a good hard look at it, if you happen to have uh, a strong magnifying glass, you can really get in there and look at the security features and some of the finer details on the coins. Uh, believe it or not, it is actually very difficult to counterfeit these things. It's quite expensive to produce them. So even for counterfeiters, they have to invest a lot of money to be able to replicate a coin properly. So you want to take a very good look at the fonts on the coin that, that obviously the spelling and, and some of the finer details are all correct. Um, 
when it comes to bars, a lot of people will buy one ounce bars, 10 ounce bars. They come in these uh, security packages. And a lot of the times we found if, we, if we're dealing with a counterfeit situation, it is the quality of the packaging because the mints use very high-end packaging and good quality materials when they put these together. So the quality of the packaging, the color of the packaging will be incorrect. The font of the logo of the, the manufacturer will be slightly off. So again, it's not a perfect test, Daniela, but it's a good starting point. If you notice right. something that looks fishy, you're going to want to investigate further. The next thing that, that we do at the vault is obviously a weight test. We will weigh every piece to make sure that it weighs the, the, the desired amount. So again, that sounds very simple, but counterfeiters have to have equal weights to the actual producers in order to, to create a proper counterfeit. And that's actually harder than you would think. So we know for a fact that a mint or refinery will never have a product that is under the weight that is stated on the bar or coin. So we're expecting this coin to weigh either exactly what the mint states it's gonna weigh or just slightly above. Some mints will actually add a little, little tiny fraction of, of metal to make sure that their products are always above the weight because they never wanna be below. You can only imagine the tweets that would explode if, if a, a mint were below its weight. So we wanna, you know, here I'm using a, a fairly sensitive scale. Uh, it goes to three decimal points on the gram. And so I can weigh this coin and make sure that it weighs exactly the amount of grams or slightly more. If it's less, I definitely want to look into that further. So now getting into the more scientific side of the testing, uh, step three is um, a, a machine that actually measures density of the metal. So each uh, type of metal and each purity of metal will have a different density. So for example, a gold Krugran will have a slightly different density than a gold maple leaf because the Krugran is like 92% pure gold. The gold maple leaf is four nines pure gold. Obviously silver is different. And then if you took like non-precious metals like lead or something like that, they would have a completely different density than precious metals. So this machine is actually quite easy. You simply put the coin down on it and it has a, a range of, that tells you that this coin falls within the tolerable range. And if it's outside of that range, it gives you an indication. And again, you're gonna to wanna to test it. You can also test both sides of the coin to make sure that it's not just like one side is plated in gold, for example, uh, and the other isn't. So you would test both sides and make sure that it's both sides of the coin are within the desirable range for the density yep. measurement. And is there a five nines coin? There is a five nines coin, yes. Uh, the Royal Canadian Mints, I know, has a series of five nines coins that have been around quite a long time. Um, and that is a good question. I don't know how that machine would do with a five nine coin. I've never done <laughs> But uh, there, there are five nines. But most common four, four nines. Four nines coins or three nine coins. You also have the Gold Eagle. So this machine, the Sigma Metallics, which is actually quite a popular uh, machine for people that own a home, it's about $200. And it has different settings for Krugrands, Eagles, Maples, all the kind of standard bestsellers, yep. the four nines, the three nines, the silver. So this is actually, if you're going to spend, you know, if you, if your budget is like two, 300 bucks, get a very good scale and get yep. the Sigma Metallics machine. If you want to go next level, and this, yeah. this, this machine is made in Germany. Uh, I remember meeting the manufacturers. They're extremely proud of the technology. It's kind of a standout in our industry. And it, it, it is basically an extremely powerful magnet that gives you a reading. So we had the density test. This is the, mag the magnetism test. And every metal or every element on the periodic table has a different reaction to magnetism. Some things are uh, attracted to magnets. Other things are repelled. Precious metals are repelled by magnets. There's no magnetic draw, actually. It, it tends to repel the gold and silver when it's pure. But this machine takes it one step further. You place the product on the machine and it actually gives you a, a reading, a scientific reading to tell you if the reaction of the product is the expected uh, reaction, as opposed to if I had put a lead or, or a 25 cent quarter, the, the output of the machine would have basically said, this is, this is not what was expected for, for, for gold. Um, and what's beautiful about this machine is it can also test larger, thicker bars, whereas the Sigma Metallic can only do thinner products. It only reads to a certain level.
This can actually do like 100 ounce bars. It can do tubes of 20 ounce silver eagles, for example. So it's, it's a pretty powerful, pretty amazing machine. And that runs for about 800 US or $1,000 US. So if you're really serious uh, about it, you could think about that, that machine. Yeah, if you're really serious or you have a significant amount of holdings, uh, yeah, we right. have people that have uh, have asked us about this and gone out and ordered their own machine for sure. Very, very cool. I guess in your career, Mark, um, have you encountered fakes often? I wouldn't say often. Uh, I have encountered fakes, uh, both at uh, very large depositories that I used to audit in my Kitco days. Um, I, I won't disclose which ones, but I came across some things that you would be shocked that they'd made their way into the system. Um, very poor quality. Now this goes back to like early 2000s when technology right. was different. But even more recently, I have come across um, fake uh, one ounce RCM gold bars. So they come in, this is a PAMP bar. And I'll, I'll finish by speaking a little bit about the Veriscan technology, but uh, one ounce RCM bars have been faked uh, to a certain extent. And uh, in that one that I found was a tungsten filled gold bar. Um, but I actually noticed it because the font and the packaging was slightly off. And I investigated further and realized that it was indeed a fake. Well, if I was a counterfeiter, I would not want to encounter Marky Axley. <laughs> <Dip it out. laughs> so. Next career move. Yeah, detective of uh, counter. Well I, I really appreciate it. I mean, do, I mean, I know I get a lot of emails about this. Do you, do you encounter it too? Like, how do I know if it's real? Do you get that client feedback? I, again, it's just a summary of what we talked about, Daniela. First things first, reputable dealer. Like yeah. that's rule number one for everything yeah. that you do when you're, you're investing in precious metals. Buy from a reputable dealer that eliminates a lot of problems. Obviously you can invest in testing equipment, but worth mentioning, there are certain products, certain brands that have invested a lot of money in Providence uh, of, of the metals. So where do the metals come from? How do we prove that to you? PAMP Swiss is a very good uh, example of that. They have a technology called Veriscan. So you scan this little QR code on the bottom of the bar and it will yeah. actually show you which plant in Switzerland it was manufactured in. You know, what was the, the life cycle of this gold bar? So you have more yeah. assurance. Again, maybe not perfect, but you have more assurances that your gold bar is legitimate. And I think the future, and you would know more about this, would be blockchain, right? How blockchain will be integrated um, into uh, knowing the source of your, of your gold or silver. Absolutely. We're still in the early days. Actually, PAMP, again, is kind of taking Veriscan to the next level. They want to put all of the information on the blockchain. They want to go from mine, like in uh, yeah. Africa, an African mine, all the way to right. a vault in the Cayman Islands. Yeah. That's going to take some time. There's a lot of uh, players yeah. in the supply chain that all need to collaborate. But those early steps have already been taken for that to happen. Very cool stuff. And before I let you go, I remember that in part one of this, I want to ask you about palladium. So just quick thoughts on palladium. palladium and, and yes. <laughs> the round run up we saw, like, are you getting more and more um, interest of people looking at palladium? Definitely. Uh, unfortunately, a little bit too late. Usually, you know, people when when the interest spikes, it's like you should have done this before. Yeah. But the, the point being that I always try to make is that even though it, on a long-term chart, gold, silver, platinum, palladium tend to trend in the same direction, tend, in shorter periods of time, they can break out you know, on their own. And we saw that with palladium. Russia you know, is a, it produces about 20% of the world's palladium, exports 20% of the world's palladium. So when they invaded the Ukraine, the palladium price went up about 30 or 40% in a week. And so that's an opportunity to, for investors who had already had some palladium in their portfolio, they had an opportunity to make a huge return in a very short period of time. And, and basically they had diversified away from just owning gold or silver and had that additional platinum or palladium in their portfolio. So that's why I'm always preaching it. And, and yeah, hopefully some people are listening. Very cool. Well, Mark, I appreciate you giving us this inside look, uh, special edition from inside the vault uh, on testing. Uh, very, very cool stuff. You're welcome, Daniela, and you are always welcome to come join us in Cayman Islands. You know that. I will be coming soon, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, thank you all for watching. We'll have much more amazing content headed your way only on Stansberry Research. And don't forget to sign up for premier content you can't get anywhere else at dignialacomboni.com. That's it for me. Thanks for watching. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.